vision is very important because vision sets the agenda. And if you're going to take risks, you need to have that agenda because the, the, the agenda is your safety net. And I think museums are wonderful places for artists to take risks because they have a huge resource of knowledge and experience behind them. And although they're in the public gaze, we can give that agenda to an artist and let them play within it. The situation in London is that we have diminishing government funds and so the uh, proportion of income that we have to self-generate both from footfall to ticket sales but from uh, sponsorship and uh, philanthropy it gets ever greater. So I don't know what the answer <coughs> to that is but certainly it is, it is um, creating a situation where we have to think very very carefully when we think about our exhibition programme to ensure that we have sufficient popular uh, content, content of wide appeal, that we can carry content of less wide appeal. Mm. And, and that's not a bad thing, because I think museums um, should have wide appeal. I suppose beyond that, uh, the partnership model is uh, of huge potential in helping us uh, support each other in these endeavours. And, you know, in, in the bigger scheme of things, museums have visual arts are a rarefied um, places. Um, we're not shopping malls, uh, and we don't have that, we're not football grounds, but we are incredibly important uh, for the cultural life of the nation, and the cultural life is incredibly important ultimately for you know, the economic and well-being of the nation. So if we can work together to ensure those uh, you know, sustainable uh, futures, we're now a dispersed collection. More of our collection is shared with regional museums in the UK than is on display at Tate Modern. So I think um, every new partnership means we can reinvent them. At a very simple level, it uh, puts us in direct communication and conversation and reciprocity with one of the great institutions in this region and allows us finally to introduce into the collection a narrative around Australian art. Mm. Since uh, my work on the collection, which started in 2006, I've been pushing and pushing to try and build from a collection that focused on Western European and North American art, to think about the interconnections with that story, uh, with artists and moments you know, in the history of art from other parts of the world. But what it does for us is that it, or for Australia, it gives us an ability to show really great Australian artists in our galleries alongside really great artists from Brazil or from India or from Korea. So there's this wonderful, it is a kind of global presence of art from the great centres of productivity. Yeah. And those are centres that in the old story were thought of peripheral places and now they come centre stage and that's that's what's really nice. You know, let's be really pragmatic about this. It was not just about where the great art is, but where we could network, where we could find funds, where we had connections and relationships. A signature institution needs a strong vision. We grew out of a historic institution, the old Tate Gallery, but very few museums have that opportunity to redefine themselves, kind of from scratch. So, and I think, you know, opening 2000, a hugely symbolic year, the dawn of a new century. So it really was a kind of a statement for what does the museum of the 21st century mean. And we very deliberately as curators set out uh, as part of the process of originating that museum to kind of question everything we had done before, to throw everything in the air. And uh, we turned a few fundamental things upside down. And the principal thing we turned upside down was this notion of a kind of single canonical art history. And that really set the tone for Tate Modern being a place where you ask questions, you don't tell, you, uh, you inform and you ask questions of your audience, you ask questions of yourself, and you really challenge artists. We were therefore able to respond to the changing nature of art since 2000 the uh, scale ambition of a contemporary artist practice, the way that artists really now are pushing at engaging with audiences, the way that audiences are really pushing at engaging with artists. So uh, a, a fundamental shift in the museum has been one from a kind of authorial you know, institution that just holds information and disseminates it to one where we say, okay, so we're all in it together. What does it mean? What can we do together? 
think it's a really important balance between inviting and tempting and, and pushing from behind. And people don't like to be made to feel stupid. It's absolutely important that museums remove what I would call trip hazards so that the journey in is, is as smooth as possible and at least there must be the appearance of, you know, it's a, it's a voluntary thing. No, but you can't force anybody to take on uh, the world of visual art. We have to be very, um, uh, very straightforward. We've got to be very careful in the language that we use. You can really alienate people if they don't understand the terms that uh, you uh, use. Uh, we need to encourage people gently to become engaged. And then once they are engaged, I think the journey needs to be as straightforward as possible. I think, I mean, I, that word bias, you know, it resonates very strongly with me. I think it's uh, everybody sees still through gendered eyes. And I'm aware continuously, and always have been at whatever level I've been performing, of uh, my own behaviour, my own actions being perceived uh, in different ways by different people according to their gender bias. And um, I'm thrilled to have become a female director uh, and I'm very aware that I need to support my colleagues, both those who may suffer from gender bias and those who may uh, un unconsciously um, you know, uh, make decisions with gender bias. I recently told a senior member of staff that I was uh, hoping very much to construct a programme uh, around a kind of 50-50 balance and uh, they said to me, you must be joking. And I thought, well that's an interesting question, why would I be joking? Um, so I think there's a long way to go. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a huge uh, way to go. I, I think I suppose the other thing that I've been experiencing a little bit recently, which my daughter told me about, is some um, imposter syndrome, which I realise now is my own kind of gender bias, that it still seems to me kind of inconceivable somehow that I am in my position.